What's up, y'all? Welcome to One Faith. Got my boy here. Go ahead and introduce yourself. What's good, everybody? Today, I am not your host, but I will still be doing the most. It's your boy, Michael <laughs> Stokes. Um, and I am here repping the Be Real podcast. Be uh, Real. Overwhelming fam. Check us out at We Are Overwhelming and uh, on Instagram, Facebook, if you still have Facebook. And uh, yeah, all oh, YouTube too. You know, we got some. We got some content up there. We need to get more. Yeah, <coughs> content. We do. We up do. There. Mm. I don't know what you're looking at me for, but uh, mm, just saying. <laughs> just saying. You know. But nah, yeah. thanks for thanks mm-hmm. for, thanks for having me here, bro. I got you. You know, I got you, bro. You know, you uh, you're gonna be a recurring guest. So you know, this ain't the oh, first for time. Sure. For sure. You know, you're gonna be up here a lot likewise. more. So that means you're gonna have to be. You know, you know, likewise. We got this. You know, we we said one. You know, one faith. Right. Uh, overwhelming. <laughs> We're just overwhelmingly one faith, you know? Yeah, overwhelmingly one faith. We're overwhelmingly mm. one faith. Ain't that beautiful? Ain't that good? It's so wonderful. So, yeah, you voted for Trump. Um. <laughs> <laughs> nice segue, right? So, yeah, you voted for Trump. But, yeah, back to the back to this. So, like, our topic today, we're talking about church and culture and whatnot. And but somehow it turned, it somehow into, turned into church and state and politics. I mean, this dude talking about some church and state, and it was like, yeah, we're going to be here for a while. We talk about church and state. But Well, I can, I, 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 I can segue it back together. I can. You can. Um, Because it goes back to what you were saying about, like, his hold on people. Um, Yeah, we can definitely go that way. I know know where you're going with that. Because a lot of that particular influence started to shift the culture in the church. Yeah. Especially on the evangelical side. Very much so. Very much so. I mean, I don't know. Like, you were Kojic at the time? Yeah. Still? Mm-hmm. What was it Not like? Now. What he said? What? Not now. Not now. Nah. Yeah, yeah. Got gotcha. you. <laughs> um, it's like yeah, we gotta make some definitive lines drawn in the sand. Drawn like, in the sand. Yeah. Just. Like, let me go on record to say I did not say who I voted for. So you guys Don't know. can have to keep guessing. Well, this was 2016. When, or 20, when, when, when did well, he? I just have 2017. I just never tell anybody. Like I don't oh, even you don't tell, tell my parents. I tell. I don't care who. I, I don't, I don't care. My, I don't even like, tell my parents. The past election, I voted for Jesus Christ. I literally wrote in Hold Jesus on. Christ on the ballot and slid that thing in. I'm not lying. I said it on the last episode, on the last podcast. Uh, I voted for Jesus. I voted for Jesus. Jesus for eternity. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for that. I don't even care. But, I mean, think about it. Like, at the time, I was on board for, for, for Trump again. Mm-hmm. What happened was when he had that debate, and he told the Proud Boys to stand down. And his whole defense and stuff over the like Black Lives Matter thing and all that other mm-hmm. stuff. That and just seeing like how like I've like I said, his hold on people, mm-hmm. his hold on the church, people in general, bro. When you couple that with the crazy, outrageous, and ridiculous Trump supporters that are out there. And they they're, were they're out there. I'll be honest. One distinction I will make: they were out there before. Yeah, we were out there before, and they then, were there. Now yeah. we just see them because <laughs> now they of just the see. internet and because <laughs> of politics. Now we're like, oh, right. y'all out here, right, y'all out here, out here. Out here. So that's I, what I'm saying. Like, did it? How did it affect Kojic world? Because that's oh man, it was we was predominantly was, black church. Honestly, it was mainly. I don't even say it was split. It was more certain sides of Kojic. Rock with Trump, mm-hmm. other sides of Kojic, major a great majority of Kojic who were, um, I would say, who were um, vocal enough and spoke out against things were not against, were not mm-hmm. for Trump. Okay, um, and that was evident. Yeah, like yeah, you can go on social media and see all the different things. I'm not even like I'm not just spilling tea or anything like that. Damn, yeah, damn, what? It's all on social media. Like it's heavily on social media. So I think, like, for me, at the time in the church we were at, like, that had played a role. But in the, what, 2020 election, Mm -hmm. that's when it was like, all right, well, we moved away. We're in this new place. Um, I'm seeing all of the bad (laughs) in, like, the supporters. Um, Like, riding riding down the street with, with my kids in the car, and you got Trump supporters, like, Raving a flag off their truck that says F Biden or, you know, mm. vulgar language and things like that. I was like, bro, I got my kids here. Like, you got a whole bunch of stuff, like, and a whole bunch of that. And then just seeing how crazy and how wild they were, I was like, bro, on top of the things that he was saying, what I was like, we really got to choose the lesser of the two evils. Mm. Because I definitely won't vote for Biden. Biden had not had me sold since 
Obama days. Mm-hmm. But I knew that he would he would be the one that could beat Trump because his association, his ties to Obama. Mm. But I didn't. I couldn't. I couldn't vote for neither one. So I just wrote Jesus on the ballot because I was like, "Wow, <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. You got it." I just let America decide. I know I'm a part of America, but at this point, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, it really did feel like um, <laughs> during that point, it was a standstill. It really did come down to a standstill. Yeah. And I mean, people can be like, oh, that's ridiculous, isn't that? I don't care who you voted for, mm-hmm. honestly. That's, me that's, neither. That's one thing about like me, and we've talked about this, where mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm not very political. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not going to kill me. It's not going to break relationships, yeah, fellowship, likewise. anything like that. Right. But that's but, the thing about church culture, though. And like, that's what scared me was yeah. just to see everybody just jump so hard where it's like people that I'm like, yo, mm. relax. Yeah. Like there are people that was like, we now not going to associate you because you're a Trump supporter. Like mm-hmm. we're not going to associate mm-hmm. with you because mm-hmm. you don't support Trump. And it's like, bro. That is literally that's, Satan driving that wedge wild. and it divide into the church. That's one thing that happened in the world. Because right. I'm sure like when 9-11 happened and Bush was going to go for another re-election, oh, yeah. there was probably a ton of that going on. Oh, you know, yeah. the war on terrorism, mm-hmm. it drove a wedge between mm-hmm. like politics and stuff like that. But at the same time, I was a kid. I had yeah. never seen, yeah. I didn't even see the church this divided when Obama was running for office. Oh, bro. Like I know the world or socially it was, but it's like yeah. I didn't really. The feel church that wasn't in as the church. divided, yeah, yeah. But we, but the thing is, the church wasn't as vocal or as expressive about a lot of the things that were going on during Obama's tenure until like towards the end of towards his tenure end. when he started coming out mm-hmm. for like gay pride mm-hmm. and things like that. Mm-hmm. Like when he started doing that stuff, that's when you started hearing more of the church mm-hmm. come out. The abortion yeah. argument, gay mm-hmm. pride, um, the two hot topics. They they went. Um, oh, they started digging deep. I remember. Because this is right when I first got saved back around like 2012. Mm-hmm. They would um, dig deep into like the, his ancestry and roots. Oh, and yeah. Like, oh, he was raised, you know, by a former terrorist and stuff mm-hmm. like that. You know, it's just like yeah. a lot of weird a stuff lot of weird just started stuff popping up. And I, I guess, I don't know, it just kind of from an early age, you know, being 18 at that point just kind of made me feel like, why is this being talked about so yeah. much at like an apologetics yeah. conference or a youth conference? Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Why is it being like, talked so much in church and we're not focusing on like the gospel? We're not focusing on souls. Which right? sounds hypocritical because then when people were going Black Lives Matter and then the response was just talk about Jesus and the gospel, you know what I'm saying? So it's like you don't win. No yeah. way. Like, you're going to piss somebody off you one are. way or the other. That's and the thing love, is, that's what I love about podcasts. I'm right, like, I get right. To, we can talk about this stuff. I get to piss someone off no matter no, what no, I we say. We pissed a lot of people off just now, but that's what? the thing. <laughs> but that's the thing because send like, all emails to we are one, one faith. faith to admin at we are one faith dot com. <laughs> <laughs> send all your emails and your replies and rebuttals, whatever. But that's the thing though, because like just like how I said, like I couldn't vote for Trump because of the vulgar stuff and this, that, and the other. Mm. Somebody will use that against me and say, oh, well, you you just, you know, you just a fake Trump supporter or whatever. But you will highlight the vulgar stuff that Black Lives Matter and stuff are doing mm-hmm. and say, well, this is why I can't vote for the Democrats. And the, this is why I can't support it, that. It was so weird. It's so weird. It's like you picking and choosing which ones you like and what you don't like. And that's really we do that in the church. We pick and choose. We pick and choose all the time. We pick and choose which sins we love and which I mean, sins we don't. But at the same time, I mean. The believer should have been the one saying that both sides are vulgar. Mm -hmm. Worst case scenario, if you told me like you went into a prayer closet, you went away and fasted and prayed and you felt strongly that with your awareness of all pros and cons of each individual, you Mm -hmm. felt like God was leading you to vote in one direction. You'll get no rebuttal from me. Mm -mm. Because if you are seeking God, like honestly seeking God and not seeking your preference or seeking CNN or you know anything other than ESPN? That was the only thing I could watch for the last like eight years. Oh, bro! And ESPN was it? It's about to get rough. Come November, yeah. It's like November this year. It's about to get I, I insane. I it's going to be crazy. I'm, I'm not even looking forward to it. No, I'm not. Like I might. You want to move out of the country for a little bit? Just <laughs> bro, I want take, to. I take want a break. <laughs> I want to go to like either Africa. I want to go somewhere where, go it, Mexico. where it's not too crazy. Yeah. You know, shout out Mexico. They got say, they got chop. I know they got they got chop, and they got election coming up too. I was just there. Oh yeah, bro, it's painted all over their walls, like the candidacies and the names and stuff like that. Like they go on like a whole campaign of like Mm. putting their name everywhere. Wow, and it's 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 a worse situation than what we got. 
But they have a different democracy than us, though. Like it's not even really. It doesn't feel like even a democracy. Yeah. Not when I was there. I'm speaking as an outsider. So if you're in Mexico, you know something. um, Feel free to share. Yeah. Send the email to him. Yeah. (laughs) Send me that email. (laughs) (laughs) We are one faith. We are one faith. <laughs> Same email. Same email address. You know, um, even though he's re- representing the Be Real podcast. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, know. You know, we, we, we don't we don't uh, engage with a uh, you know. <clears throat> anyway, uh, <laughs> anyway, church and culture. So that we talked about the culture part. The culture, as far as how politics have shifted the culture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about culture because I feel like politics have shifted the culture of the church mm-hmm. for one side, but there's additional. Things that has shifted the culture of the church as well too, as far as like multiculturalism, Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. because a lot of churches now emphasis on it, Mm -hmm. unity, but we don't really represent unity like that. Well, I don't know how we define unity. Mm. I think that's always been a weird definition. You know, people might not like this take that down because that's (sighs) one nation under God, indivisible. That was written before we were ever manifesting unity within this country. Yeah. We were still at odds with each other. We still viewed people of darker complexion as Mm -hmm. inferior Mm -hmm. and not worthy of human treatment and human rights. We still viewed women as inferior and not worthy of equal opportunities to do things that they very well could do and have done better since then. Yeah. So it's like those words. So we, we claimed unity back then Mm -hmm. we claim unity now, mm-hmm. I don't think we've fully come to, and it could be just we're heading, progressing more and more in that direction. I don't think we fully come to the real biblical definition of unity mm. within our country and certainly not within our church. Because mm. like, as we talked about politics, history, nationalism, even, you know, uh, the, the, for, even for black people, like yeah. black pride and culturalism, uh, you know, it influences people more, it seems, than the Bible. Yeah. The yeah. Bible will tell you what unity looks God, like. that's good. And we still will go, well, I think that we're doing pretty good based on this standard. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, but that's not what it said. All right. That's not what it said at all. Like, honestly, that means you can look at Ephesians four. Like, that's what the whole podcast is based on. But seriously, yeah. that's that's when you look at the kingdom aspect of unity. Mm-hmm. That's where it comes from. Yeah, one Lord. We worship one God. One faith. We're all believing the same thing. One yeah. baptism. We all profess the same thing. Our, our faith and our love in Jesus Christ. Yeah. But the problem is, is that you know, it's like you said. Like, I think we have a misconstrued idea. Or maybe a misconstrued ideology mm-hmm. when it comes to unity because of the fact that we don't know what unity really looks like as far as. Man. But Jesus told Jesus told us what it looks like in John he, 17. Yeah. Some people say that's a reach. But to me, it doesn't have to say unity in the passage for me to see unity it's, happening when he's like talking about oneness. Yeah. If you got to be one. Yeah. That's unity. Yeah. Not exactly. just saying, oh, we're the same. Yeah. We're copy and paste, mm-hmm. but we're we're together. Right. We're locked in. Locked in together as one. Like even mm-hmm. so like what is it like is it an acts where when acts the Holy two. Spirit Yeah, when they mm-hmm. all fellowship and all came together, mm-hmm. they received the Holy Ghost, and after that, what happened? The church came together as one. Mm-hmm. They all shared everything. They all yeah. had everything in the same pot. Whatever yeah. you made, whatever I made, mm-hmm. whatever Joe Blow made or whatever. They all brought everything together and we all shared it. We all, you know, fellowship. We had a good time. Like that's not we like we were there, but in general. I wish we were there. <laughs> I wish. But we were all like, or Christians at that time. We're all yeah. fellowshipping together and living off of um, each other as one. Mm-hmm. I think that's a good idea of unity, but that's not that's not sexy. That's not attractive. Nope. Like look at our country. We have so many different classes and, and look systems at the like like yeah look we at the church got, we, we got, got churches that has like millions on top of millions on top of millions you got churches that are struggling to keep their doors open and they won't even support those churches because either they don't believe the same, the same thing they don't have the, right yeah. they don't have the same uh what political structure they don't like their pastor may not be as dynamic and things like that. it's so many different nuances i mean think of why church of god in christ even exists it's a it's a break off of another denomination mm. that was primarily like servicing or witnessing ministering to black people. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah. Like right. a lot of our breakdowns. A lot. I, I, and, I, and I get it. Like my, my whole argument isn't that, oh, well, regardless of different theology, we should just all be together. Because mm-hmm. I don't know if that's practical. I don't, I don't know, think I don't, it, I don't think that's wisdom. I don't think it's practical until we get to heaven. No, because, yeah, because that, then that filtering system yeah, works. God will separate <laughs> yeah, the wheat from yeah, the tarry yeah, yeah, then. Yeah. yeah, but like, but don't be surprised when you get up there and there's people from other denominations that you <laughs> thought were going to hell, <laughs> and they in there in the front row, <laughs> right. worshiping Jesus right. louder than ever before. Right, because all it takes is belief, and you can sit in the back. Grip the front pew with your knuckles and your good doctrine. Mm, uh, your good doctrine. Uh, 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 mm. Mm. Subtle. Mm. <laughs> anyway. But, but no, nah, but when you look at, so when you look at church history and you look at the culture of the church, like, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up about mm-hmm. um, Kojic. Kojic based, basically was branched off of the Baptist church. Mm-hmm. Um, especially during the like Azusa movement and mm-hmm. things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bishop Mason became heavily inspired by what happened there, um, had an experience like none other and decided, you know, we should be doing this in the Baptist church. And basically those in the Baptist church was like, uh-uh. so, <laughs> <laughs> which, you know, I, I studied Azusa street. Uh-huh. If I was, you know, alive back then, yeah, it was weird. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not faulting people for hesitancy, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. what do we do with it? What do we do when we, you know, what's our response out of hes- mm-hmm. hesitancy? Do we make a decision or, do we seek the Lord for clarity? Mm. Yeah. I feel like we just made a lot of decisions over the years. Mm. And it leads mm. to like these splits like we have now. Yeah. Because honestly, like once, once pretty much once Kojic came out of Baptist, mm-hmm. um, I do believe that um, Bishop Mason like had an experience and sought the Lord heavily and decided to, you know, create the churches of, at the time, the churches of God in Christ. Mm. And then they had a split it's further down the line. It's another conversation for another day. <laughs> but you know when you get to the other denominations that came out of Koja too like you got mm-hmm. Church of God you got Assemblies mm-hmm. of God mm-hmm. you got all these different denominations that branch from Koja but those really came out of race, racism right. really right and so when you look at that and this is why I say that we don't really know what unity is because when you look at the history of the church and historically we've never been unified yeah. And like, and even as we're getting to a place now where we have different multicultural churches, That's where we're what I was aiming for, go there. yeah, we aim mm-hmm. for that. Which I, I, and I'm not, I'm not shunning that because mm-hmm. I love multicultural churches. I feel like that's where you're going to get the the closest representation of the kingdom, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Um, if you do it the correct way, I put I put that plug in. If you mm-hmm. do it the correct mm-hmm. way, with being intentional about being multicultural. Which let me just go ahead and tell you, most churches. Even the biggest ones, the flashiest ones, most popular ones that are multicultural and look like they're doing it right. TBD on that. Yeah. Like Bro, doing this, it the right way means so much more than just like visual yeah. or, you know, what I'm yeah. saying? like mm-hmm. this is how you can tell. So I was looking like right before I went on my social media fast, I found it's this conference that was coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it was the Jesus Image Conference. Mm-hmm. And so I want to go. Yeah. I saw the I saw the, the list of speakers. Mm-hmm. I did not see not a single black person on that on that Is list of Francis speakers. Francis Chan coming back for it? Yeah, Francis Chan was there. Oh, that's a representation. We got <laughs> that's one. the only representation. <laughs> we got, we got. <laughs> We but got, that was we it. Got I one mean, Asian brother, which if y'all know me, I love Francis Chan. We got one yeah, Asian he, brother whose name is Francis. <laughs> we got him. We got representation. We got what? We got representation. But we diverse. We diverse. <laughs> but but it's that the type worship, of diversity. The worship though. team though will probably be diverse. The worship team will definitely be more. The diverse. choir will be diverse. That, all, all of the other gifts will be diverse. But when it comes to the teaching, the preaching, that's not as diverse yet. Does it have to be? I will say yes. I'm just poking. Yeah, I know. I'll say yes. And this is why I'll say yes, because I feel like when you do not allow or do not open your audience to other voices Mm -hmm. that don't look like you, (laughs) you miss out. You miss out on what God is really doing. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, when Paul established his church, he had Apollos, he had Priscilla and Aquila there. Mm -hmm. Priscilla and Aquila was basically running the church. Apollos was heavily influenced by the culture. And he was heavily and he was heavily influencing the church, the Corinthian church. Mm. And so at that time, a lot of people were flocking to what Apollos was, was saying in preaching because they loved his preaching. They loved his style of preaching because he was that dude. Oh, for sure. But Paul is like, 
well, why are y'all dividing? Because you're saying you're for Cephas or who is Peter. You're for me mm-hmm. or you're for Apollos. Like, but we're all preaching the same yeah. thing, which is God. Mm-hmm. So we have to allow other people to have that platform, not just to preach and just to speak and do those things, but to express God the way that they would express God. So you mean it would be like a show of unity? In it a would. Way. If you heard the same message, core message, yeah. coming from so many different backgrounds, so exactly. many different perspectives, exactly. so many different culturals, cu- culturals, cultural upbringing, and, you know, just, yeah, it would, that would paint a, a, a brush of unity. That would paint a broad brush of unity, mm-hmm. because not only am I bringing my exp- experience and my um, background in Kojic, Baptist, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. holiness, to the platform, but I have a white brother who would bring his background. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe he was Catholic. Before. Maybe he was Catholic and yeah. he, you know, decided to join this reformation or he decided to be Baptist or mm-hmm. assemblies of God, church of God, whatever, you know, whatever, right. And he's bringing his background, you know, his, Yo, his expressions and his good. things like that. That's so I mean, good. if we, yeah. if we funnel to just mm-hmm. one type of experience or one voice, then how can we say that we're, act- we're actively hearing from God or we're actively receiving from God when we're only receiving from God in one way? It's an echo chamber. It's right. an echo chamber effect. Yeah. What's so funny, I, what I just thought about is um, I was thinking about why that's so important. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if you've ever done this, but I'll, I'll out myself. I'll be guilty of voting for Trump. <laughs> That's for uh, that's for you. That's the confession for you to let out. I didn't confess that. Everybody knows. Like, I mean, it's obvious. So he said, he, "There's a flag on the other side of the wall. So y'all can't see it." Uh, I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. Um, Trump 2024. Right. But the, <laughs> I, but it, I mean, this it all plays together. I mean, in a weird way, it all does. I like you all. I have you? you no, you can. You can. <laughs> but have you ever like? Looked at someone knowing that you shouldn't do this, but you did it anyway. You you made a judgment about them. Oh yeah. You assumed you knew them just from. Oh yeah, from the, based off of. Yeah, you sized them up. You did, you bro. know, and, and you could have, you probably could have pegged them, bro. So this. But is, then they opened their mouth from a pulpit, mm-hmm. and you like, excuse me, you 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 what? You speak in my language. You, you speak talk, in you, tongues? You, you talking Jesus. Right. <laughs> right. You, you talking oh, the Lord. Right. Like, oh, okay. You, you, what? You do what? And so sometimes I think that's also important because we wouldn't give other people that chance. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking in the church, not just humans in general. We wouldn't give people who are different than us that chance to actually find out how much we have in common. Mm. Yeah. To see that unity where it's like, yeah. man, I remember like, when I first got saved and we were doing a Christmas thing at the church and they're, you know, everyone's getting their music together and stuff like that. I'm like, well, ain't nothing really here for me. <laughs> and I was like, I guess nobody writes Christian uh, or Christmas raps. And so someone kind of sarcastically was like, well, why don't you do it? And I was like, well, bet I will. Mm-hmm. And so I did. And I remember being so nervous about it. And, you know, I remember performing it and this is a predominantly white and I would say affluent, audience for the town that I live in and um, that I grew up in and they loved it mm. and one of the things they loved so much about it was they're like I understood everything you said I've never understood rap before and mm. they said everything you said was pointing to Jesus and the gospel mm. and I agree 100% with mm-hmm. everything you said you know mm. and so they loved the song yeah loved it they they didn't know anything about this you know I had dreadlocks and just you know, probably a attitude at times, you know, I was new to my faith, you know, <laughs> um, coming into the church with a whole bunch of baggage, yeah. you know, but it's like, they were like, okay, one thing we can, we can respect. And one thing that we didn't expect mm-hmm. was you have a clear grasp on the gospel yeah, and what Christmas really means. Yeah. And they're like, yo, I can get behind that. Yeah. And so it became one of those things where it's like, I did it like two or three years in a row. Mm. Like people liked it. Yeah. And so it's like, I feel like if people didn't hear that, maybe they would have never heard that part mm. of my heart. Yeah. Or that part of like what we had in common through our one faith. Yeah. You know, where it's just like, 
they probably would have just been like, mm, I don't know what he has to say. Yeah. You know, it's like it's easy to write people off or blow people yeah. off. And I do the same thing when I'm like, mm, this dude's corny. <laughs> you know, it's like, what's he going to say? He's corny. He and say? then I'm like, ooh. He this, deep. This, this man, he preaching. Like, yeah, <laughs> uh-huh, okay. Or, you know, oh, yeah. she's singing. Yeah. You know, or something. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. There's there's stuff like that that happens where it's just like I feel like it's so important for us to see that and experience that that way we're more open and receptive to that unity being yeah. part of that unity with people who don't look like us because we've been proven once before yeah. that there are so many layers so many pieces and members that are part of this body mm-hmm. this church of Jesus Christ yeah mm, man that's good that's good no honestly. You know, when you when you were talking about that, that the thing that came to my mind was what broke me from, I would say, having a spirit of religion. I've talked about this Mm -hmm. a couple of times, but what broke me from having that spirit of religion and kind of like started the for me, the exodus of leaving Kojic. Mm -hmm. Don't go there. (laughs) <laughs> another episode another there. episode <laughs> but you know what started that process was we had visited a church in charlotte mm-hmm. um and when we was at that church you know me and my wife we checked in the kids we went to the church and you know we fell in love with the the worship experience everything was great and then we listened to the word and, and they had a ham and b the dude was playing a ham and b white preacher was preaching we was like yo this is a different experience this is not normal, but we love it. And so, and then after, at the end, when everything was done. My favorite color wasn't orange, was it? <laughs> with an arrow, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With an arrow pointing up. With an arrow pointing up. <laughs> but what happened was, when we had, uh, at the end of the experience, after we picked up the kids and everything like that, um, we were first-time guests. They pretty much had a person that was assigned to us as like a VIP host. Um, and she was, <laughs> now nah, I'm not coming for you because you're tats, <laughs> but she, but she was tatted, bro. She was like yeah. tatted from like her neck, like literally her neck. She had sleeves all the way down to like her ankles. Like she was just, and she was wow. showing all her tats. I mean, not, not in a tasteful way, you know, yeah, she yeah. won't just like out here with the shirt. Cut yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got you. But it's like, <laughs> you could infer that it's like, she got a full body sleeve. Right. Probably. You can tell yeah. like she, she loves tattoos. And so she was tatted from from her neck down. And what drew me to what's first of all to this whole entire thing was she asked, she was like, can I pray for you and your family? And I was like, hmm, you know, me being I'm a coach of Gilder, you know, prestigious, very esteemed. You know, how could this little white lady with tattoos pray for me? You know, does she have the Holy Ghost? <laughs> Have you been through the five Have steps? Have you been of through the five <laughs> steps of, you know, laying of hands, baptism into the Holy Spirit, but <laughs> deliverance training, right? Intensive, intensive, intensive. All that stuff is necessary, though. But <laughs> <laughs> keep going. We still working on it. But this is the thing, though. This is the thing. Not for real, though. Deliverance. There, there should be deliverance training, like for real, like. Especially when you're operating in spiritual Especially realms nowadays, and things. That, like so when you're casting stuff. off demons and stuff, you need some training in that. You can't just go out and be like, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And then that demon's like, ah. <laughs> I've seen that happen to people before. The Not- question <laughs> is, who should be the one giving the training? Mm. That's again a whole nother episode. That's a whole nother episode on the topic, yeah, like yeah. for real. But- <laughs> They're not going to let us come back. We, we can't get through one thought. You can't get through one, right? <laughs> But for real though, so she asked, "Can I pray for you?" And I was like, "You know what? Yeah, let me see what you got." A little pride, you know, mm-hmm. welling up in my chest. Like, yeah, let me see what you got. And as soon as this little white lady started <laughs> started praying, like literally, like that spirit of religion broke off of me. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't like she, it wasn't no deep prayer. It wasn't no crazy prayer. It wasn't no prayer like you know, like we're accustomed to. It was a regular. It was boring honest. prayer. It was honest, but it was honest, mm-hmm. and it, and I could feel it come from her heart, and it was sincere, and that's when I was like, I've been doing this all wrong. Mm-hmm. I've been doing this all wrong, and that's what started, I would say, the entire trajectory of of me focusing on multiculturalism, focusing on kingdom, focusing on 
we need to accept people with their uniqueness, with their differences, with their personalities, who they are. We need to, first of all, accept people where they are and allow God to continue to transform them into the image that he has created them to be. Mm -hmm. Um, But at the same time, we have to be willing to accept people and their flaws. We have to be willing to accept people where they are. We have to be willing to accept people and their spiritual gifts where they are and allow their gifts to grow. Like, if I had shut that girl down and told her, like, no, don't pray for me. Like, Mm -hmm. I could have shut down her gift, like, her her heart for wanting to pray. Mm -hmm. Like, I could have been that type of dude. But I'm not. And and I think that when that happened, not only did it do something for her and at Mobile, I don't know, but it did something for me and my entire family because now we completely, like, you know, this is what we feel that we need to be at. Yeah. This is what we feel like we need to be in. We need to be involved in this. We need to do everything we can to bring our children up in this because this is the actual representation of the kingdom, not just saying like, oh, there's just going to be black people, a black section in heaven, a white section in heaven, a Chinese mm-hmm. section in heaven, a Hispanics, because, you know, they can get down. But <laughs> it's not going to be all of that. We're all going to be together. They're going to get there one. before us because, you know, they got Saturday <laughs> night services. That they last do. Into Sunday. So when we just getting up to go to church, they just getting done. They just getting done. And they about to start up again. Right. But <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> I miss it. I miss it. You know? I miss that. I miss that. <laughs> but you know what? But but that's but that goes to like I think for me it was just seeing how God is able to use different people. Mm-hmm. That was the overarching truth of the gospel for me, mm-hmm. because he he didn't just speak through my bishop. He didn't just speak through one person. He didn't just speak through me or or other people who were ordained or had a title and things like that. He speaks through everyone, regardless of of where they are. Like he used Rahab, Mm -hmm. prostitute. Yep. He used her. He used, um, who was it? Gomer with, uh, with Hosea. Yeah. Like he used different people. Like he can use the muckety muck. Yeah. And, 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 and he used Peter. (laughs) He used Peter. Right. Like he can use different ones. This is, this is a tough one. He used Judas. He definitely used Judas. Because he needed before Judas. we get to the whole part where it says the devil entered into him, he was the one going out here. You talk about deliverance. He was part of the two he was by part two. Of, yeah. Going out. He was delivering. He was doing everything in the name of Jesus. He yep. was casting demons. Yep. He was preaching the gospel. He was doing everything. He was a disciple. He was a true and disciple. Jesus knew what was going to happen to mm-hmm. him. Mm. Sit on that. Mm. Mm. That's deep. That's that that mm, this one's like a fart that you know is nasty. It's like that's just that it just stinks. It just stinks. That just stinks. It just stinks. There ain't no. But the thing around. is, like Jesus did everything he could for him, though, knowing that he didn't. He didn't turn him away. Mm-hmm. He didn't shun him because he knew Judas was going to eventually turn on him because he knew that he needed that in order to get to the cross. He still allowed Sorry, it. I hate that it had to be you, my boy. But someone had to do it. <sighs> yeah, but I mean. I'm, a opti- the I'm optimistic, the yeah, like that whole, I mean, it's that unwritten area of the Bible. I'm optimistic that, that is an unwritten if, area if, of the if, Bible. if Judas had re- resisted that temptation or that urge to give into his flesh and to greed, Jesus still would have got to the cross. That was yeah. the mission, you know what I'm saying? But do you think that, and yeah, we're definitely going. Because <laughs> then you got to start we're digging flowing. through prophecy and flowing. see like. Uh, yeah. But do you think like. Well, of course, we know Jesus can perceive people's hearts. Mm-hmm. He knows what's going on in their heart and whatnot. Do you think that Jesus knew, like, once Judas turned, that Judas was going to eventually end up committing suicide? I don't think you can. So I'll put it like this. So it's, it's one of those gray areas mm-hmm. where it's like you ask my thoughts, you ain't asked for a fact. Mm-hmm. I know. Um, I guess I'm just trying to preference my thoughts, how I got there. Mm-hmm. So when you and I sin. And, you know, probably someone on the other side of the screen watching. When we as believers fall into sin, we immediately feel a sense of shame Mm -hmm. and guilt Mm -hmm. and conviction at our betrayal Mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. Now, because we have the written, revealed word of God, Mm -hmm. we have verses like, hey, if we confess our sins, Mm -hmm. he's faithful and just to forgive us and Mm -hmm. to cleanse us 
from all unrighteousness. We can look back on uh, the prayers of David when he, you know, falls into deep sin. He, we can look at, you know, verses like, you know, confess your sins to mm -hmm. one another and there and you'll find healing, mm -hmm. right? I think we have a different hope. Like Jesus has already died yeah. and resurrected. Yeah. You know, but we have a hope that I don't feel like Judas had. Yeah. So that's, that's like kind of what, that's my thought. Yeah. Cause like, I feel like it was inevitable. Who did Judas had to go to, to confess his sin? Like the people that he got the money from, that's what he did. He went and he yeah. said, I betrayed innocent mm -hmm. blood and they didn't want the money back. It was All like, right. it was such a, yeah. it was such a paradox yeah. like shift for him because the people who he would go to for this right relationship with God were the ones who had helped him mm -hmm. and pushed him yeah. to do this this evil thing. Yeah. And so that's why he throws the money and runs away and overcome with the guilt and shame that he can't get off of him. Mm. Mm. He's like, I just... So did Jesus know? I think yes. it's inevitable. I think he knew. Especially at that level of yeah. just like betrayal. Yeah. Because I'm like, that's a deep betrayal. A deep betrayal. I but mean, it goes along the lines of God giving us free will. For sure. Yeah, and I was about to say, I can't really say, like, oh, his betrayal was worse than when we, you know, spit in the face of the cross by falling, you know, yeah. to our flesh. Yeah. Now, for us, we have enough writings and scripture to know, like, this is going to happen. This yeah. happens. Mm -hmm. There is a hope. Yeah. There is transformation that is going to happen. It's not to say, as Paul says, should we continue in mm -hmm. sin? No, he's like, get away from it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, fight it. Yeah. But Judas, I don't think he had any of that. Yeah. So all he's left with is guilt and shame. And mm -hmm. again, this is me presupposing, but at least y'all hear how I'm trying to like piece it together from yeah. things that we do know that have been revealed to us through scripture. Mm -hmm. And, um, but yeah, I, 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 I think Jesus, yeah, not just because he's all knowing, but I think the, I feel like it was a domino effect. Yeah. Do you think Judas is in hell? <laughs> I can flip that question. I need to. I need to zoom in on your face on that. One. <laughs> <laughs> I can flip. I can flip that question. Flip it. Do, do you think nah, he's in heaven? Because I, I'm, I'll make people real, real uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Is Kobe Bryant in heaven? You went to church that day. I'm just <laughs> you, you feel me? You feel me? Where I'm just like, there's people who are gonna be like. Mm, <laughs> mm, mm. There's some people that are gonna be like, right, right, no, right, right. But when it comes to Judas, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. You walked with Christ, yeah. You, to some extent, acknowledged him for who he was, yeah. But you betrayed him, yeah. Yeah. I don't know where that left him. I know what he's spoken about, like the spirit of Judas is spoken about, yeah. Later on in the you know the text mm -hmm. where it talks about you know people falling into this sort of like wayward or backward state and they compare it to Judas. So now Judas has become a comparative Judas. Judas became so culturally significant, not just for the early church, but for the rest of humanity. When have you ever met someone named Judas? Mm. If no. someone looks at you and says, yeah, nobody's naming their child Judas. Like, if someone looks at you and says, you Judas, mm -hmm. you don't take that as a compliment, right? You don't. Like whether you believe in God or not, exactly. <laughs> you know what's funny? <laughs> the book of Jude, that's in near the end of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. People didn't know that Jude was Jesus's brother. Mm -hmm. He identifies himself as the brother of James, mm -hmm. right? So it took a little minute, and people were trying to figure out. I'm like, yes, the James, the brother, brother of Jesus, Jesus yeah. right? So go back to the book of James, see how he introduced read he your Bible. himself. Right? <laughs> read your Bible, yeah. <laughs> um, but when. Jesus's brothers actually show up by name in the gospel accounts. Mm -hmm. Jude is called Judas. Mm. Wow. Jude's actual name is Judas. Wow. But that's, you know, a, that's, flip, a, that's a nugget. When you flip Hebrew and Greek around, it's mm -hmm. like, oh, it could be translated as Jude. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, of course it would be translated as Jude, yeah. Because yeah, because now nobody wants to be associated with Judas, right? And Judas, we actually, don't talk about Judas. No, Judas no. wasn't. Judas wasn't the only Judas that Jesus rolled with. He was Judas the Iscariot. Yep, there yep. was another Judas. Yep, there was. What happened to him? Yeah, what his name get changed to? Like you know, Jude. 
that's Jay. That's Jay. That's just Jay right there. That's just Jay. <laughs> yeah. But not a lot of stuff. So it's funny how we're talking about how culture, how culture changes the church. But also, like... Culture influences talk. the church a lot. Yeah. Like, and I, I think but that a church, lot of people... Church of Jesus Christ has influenced culture. Culture, yeah. Yeah. Like, Tremendous. I feel like we... It, it cross-pollinates. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like we, we have such a heavy influence in the in the world, and the world has such a heavy influence into the church. And I don't think we use it. No. Well. No, not anymore. at all. Not so at it's all. fullest. Not at you all. Know? No. But we definitely have those nuances where, you know, the church is heavily influenced by the culture. Culture is heavily influenced by the church. I mean, look at well, Russell Wilson ain't a great. Um, <laughs> to the first person that came I'm to mind. I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> Tim Tebow. I'm still trying to be nice today. Like, no, you went from. But they represent. Mm-hmm. They represent their faith. Mm-hmm. On, on in the in the cultural sense. So the Cam Newton, Cam Newton, Cam's my guy. So did Cam Newton? Cam did, and I, I definitely made a post about it because I love Cam. Shout out to Cam Newton. But <laughs> Cam did. A lot of people do. But that's how faith, you know, influences the culture. Mm-hmm. I mean, now regardless of what these these guys' lives and what they do, you know. They allow their faith and their belief to influence some, I won't say all, but some of the decisions that they do. <laughs> and again, we're getting, we're getting snapshots of their lives where it's like you and I are going right. through our lives. There ain't nobody. We put ourselves on camera. They ain't yeah. got no choice. They ain't got no choice. I mean, because that's their God given gifts and abilities that right. has put them in the spotlight. For sure. So, I mean, you know. And that's heavy. That is heavy. That's like, heavy. And that's a, it's a heavy, heavy. Man on the road, I mean, to 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 walk with, to bear. Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't even think that I would. I don't. I don't say I would represent Christ. I would know I would represent Christ, but I don't know how great. Well, yeah, I would represent. Seamlessly. I think people would be pissed off with some of the things that I do, and I'm not saying like I do a lot of things behind my, my closed doors. I don't. I really don't. I'm really boring, cut and dry. But I say, I ain't gonna go there. <laughs> <laughs> I know where you're going. <laughs> Tune in next week for our episode about strong language and Christians. Shout out to Christians Tim Ross. And, oh wow, yeah, we definitely have to go there. We definitely have to go there. I say, let's do it. We're gonna have to go there. Oh, man. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to have a panel discussion on that one. Yeah, because I'm not being the only one on that one. Yeah, I'm not being <laughs> the only one. <laughs> I'm not being the only one on that one. Nah, because nah. nah, I think that I don't. I don't think that Christian. She, I don't think that Christian should cuss. I do. Give it away already. He already gave it away. I know. I'm just saying. Like I, I have the ability. I don't say ability, but I have the view that Christian should not cuss at all. At all. Yeah. 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 Ye
like really, really, really upset, like it's mm-hmm. and you're out of character, then those those instances it'll and things slip. like that. Yeah, it'll slip. I got you. You'll have instances where it'll slip. Mm-hmm. So, so you're not saying they should do it. You're saying it. You can understand situationally how I can it understand. Happen. Like I can understand Kurt cussing his kid out. That's a that's a private conversation between him and his kid. I don't know how many bishops, elders, preachers, pastors have cussed their kids out behind closed doors. Mm. Some some kid probably getting cussed out right now as we speak. Maybe some of them need it. I mean, some of them definitely see, need it, but that's, that's the thing. The, that's the unpopular opinion. And I'm not, so when I say kids, I'm not talking like young. I'm talking like your grown kids, your wayward prodigal child that just continues to keep coming back and just, yeah, eh, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, like, like Kurt's kid. That's, yeah, it sounded like it. When yeah. I heard the whole situation, I was like, okay. I mean, he used, he, he, he didn't use just a regular cuss word. You know, he went for the, Jugular. Yeah. He went for the throat. He went he, he went that was that. <laughs> that was that was swelled up from inside, boy. He, he, that that wasn't just a cuss word that just slip up. That ain't a slip up. That's a that's a <laughs> My wife's called me. She told me to end this episode. Ah, end it now. No, end it. End it. End it. End it. Yeah, we, we definitely should have ended like a long time ago. We went off the deep end, but no. <laughs> It's but good. nah, like we gonna great. that's that's gonna be a part two. Like we gonna we gonna definitely do a part two for that because okay. I, I and I'm like we need to talk about Christians cussing, Christians drinking, like Christians just dabbling in things. Do a mini series. We're gonna do a mini series. Yeah. yeah. Mini series of just like all things church and culture. We did church and mm-hmm. politics already. We did. So yeah. Honestly, you can break the up into shorter episodes. You can. Yeah. 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 I mean, um, honestly, that's that's one of the things I always wanted to talk about. Cause I mean, of course, me. I I'm gonna always hold a position that I feel like you should care about your image for to an extent, like how you portray yourself to the outside world, or how mm. you portray yourself to people. You don't want to be a stumbling block. You don't want other people to see you out of character, or out of out of place. If you're a Christian, like if you uphold be, could, the image of if God, it can be avoided. Yeah, I but if there there's there are gonna be situations where yeah. you can be tested, of course. Uh-huh. And I feel like sometimes, like you will. Fall into temptation mm-hmm. in that in that regard to where you have to you know cut somebody out or lay hands on somebody, but I mean that shouldn't be your first resort. Like mm-hmm. that should probably be your absolute last. Like if you try to de-escalate the situation completely, and that's just you know they just won't get out your face and, until you say bleep, <laughs> right. get out my face. Right. right. Then they'll get it, and then honestly that's that's when social media gets it, and the next thing you know it's all over that's social like, media. Oh, Kurt Franklin this, cussed his son out, called him an mf'er, like. <laughs> So it's like, you know, I feel like, you know, it's not condoning it. I think it's just it's not condoning it. I think it's just we take this whole like (gasps) approach. We're just like, man, come on. We know how this can happen. It don't take much for some of y'all. Like it really don't got squeaky clean images. It don't as far as the church and the world is concerned. But inside your car, it don't take much but me cutting you off in traffic for you to get out of character. It don't take that much for some of us. And some people it wells up inside. it wells up yeah in a personal i remember um so because i told you my whole policy is like i think stuff happens but when you're intentionally recording and posting mm-hmm. that's when you have to take accountability of like was that wisdom is that discernment mm-hmm. even if it is a just a moment and you're trying mm-hmm. to be authentic it's like is this going to cause someone to stumble All right you know and i definitely feel like that's mm-hmm. tim ross because Got you. he built yeah. his profile, he mm-hmm. built his platform on. I'm talking about Jesus, talking about God. I'm controversial. Some, he I'm talked about that, that on this recent episode where he was like, he felt like God was telling him to basically be who he was in private and public with mm. the podcast. So he now feels I respect being, he that. He feels like being he's supposed to be that honest. And but this is the thing: if you if you're not that person that you're portraying, then you're portraying somebody that's that's fake. But I feel like maybe... But that's what a lot of preachers and people do, though. Sure, a lot of Christians. Because sure, sure. we want to portray a perfect image, but on the backside, we'll clean up everything and hide the skeletons and hide all the things. Well, yeah, because if a pastor says even one thing, if he says Boaz too hard out of sermon, he ends up being on a YouTube clip, you know, somebody pulling him apart and, you know, he going viral for that one part of his clip. <laughs> right. Never mind anything else he said. Right. But if he, you know, mm-hmm. I've seen that. Yeah. Shout yeah. Out to Jensen Franklin. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I've seen this. Like, it, it's. It happens. It happens. It happens. So it's like, I can see why they, that they would revert to being 
publicly clean Mm -hmm. and then and it's not i'm using this terminology but it's just like talking maybe more real yeah in private yeah and i think for just being yourself in general i think for tim to make that shift he should have done it from the jump but he was a pastor he's been a pastor but that's the thing So i think that was gonna take time that's my whole grace period thing where it's just like i I got grace for him i I definitely got grace for that i think if he was gonna if he felt led to be this type of person and this type of if he feels and again this is if he feels like God has told him or leading him in that direction, for one, I can agree, I could disagree, but honestly, he's God's child, and that's gonna be between him and him and him, mm-hmm. you know, because yeah. he put his name in there too, where yeah. he says, "I felt like God," yeah, you know, yeah. But I feel like if God was telling him to do that, whether God chose told told him to do that, like from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Or it's just been a gradual shift for him mm-hmm. to like actually get there, mm-hmm. or God's been telling him in steps of mm-hmm. how he's been revealing what he wants him to do with this podcast. Because remember, he has no idea what he's doing with this yeah. thing either. He don't like he left he, pastoring he the podcast. He's literally, literally like he talks about walking on water with this thing where he's just like. I remember one episode that really got to me. I was thinking like an early episode. He was talking about when God told him to start a podcast, how insecure he felt. Mm. And he was just like, as a pastor and as, you know, a good pastor, you might be, you know, one in a hundred. Mm-hmm. But he said as a podcaster, yeah. like, he felt like yeah. a drop in the ocean. That's how I feel about my podcast. Like, you know? but I feel like God has, when God tells you to do something, you know, you have mm-hmm. to do it for one. Mm-hmm. Shout out to my pastor, Pastor Mike. He preached that. But, <laughs> but, you know, I feel like, you know, in a sense, when God has given you that that ability to 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 do something that is outside of your comfort zone mm-hmm. or outside of what you are accustomed to doing, you have to do it. You have to venture into that area. You don't know where God will, will take you. Mm-hmm. Um, and honestly, I think too, if God is showing him to be himself behind closed doors in the public eye, I mm-hmm. think that is more of a I want you to be real, or instead of I want you to. Start cussing and doing all be this stuff. Be controversial. I want you to just well, be I mean, who you are, period. Be, because, you like, be controversial as a Christian, but I think there's something, again, uh, the, stumbling, the stumbling block factor. Mm-hmm. I don't think God would want or desire or intend for you to be a stumbling block yeah. to his children. Yeah. Especially the babies in Christ who That's are like saying, literally babies, just yeah, yeah, coming yeah, yeah, in yeah, 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 yeah. and just, and I just got saved and yesterday. They, and they just be clinging oh on gosh. to any leader and yeah. everything. Yo, you got status, you got title, yeah. you got popularity. Yeah. What you say about the Bible is all I'm going to know about the Bible because right. God read forbid it. I don't read it myself because right. no one's looking at them saying, read your daggum Bible. <laughs> you like, about to say it, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> we was recording. Though, so I will say there's been twice on my podcast. I think we talked about this at the pit, too. Um, mm-hmm. One time I was really emotional and I dropped the N word. Hard R. To make a hard point. R, Jesus. yeah, Jesus. like, well, I was just I was talking perspectively, perspective. I wasn't saying it to mm-hmm. anyone. I was basically describing a perspective that um, I was gonna pick had. on you, but you, you dark as me, but <laughs> you ain't got a drop of white in you. I'm a little darker with these tats. You definitely are a little darker. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm secure. I'm I'm, I'm Afro Latino. Okay, you know so. <laughs> They use it too. They say, the, they say the they word say too. a lot, and no, also, they say it a lot. also in Spanish culture, it means a lot different things too. Where it's mm. like you go down to Brazil. Anyway, that's a whole nother story. People ain't ready for that. Pull it into the episode um, <laughs> about cursing, but, <laughs> about cursing. <laughs> like we not already in it, but um, <laughs> but no. And then the other time, I think I just said it flippantly, mm. and I think I I was shocked when I said. Some when I when I use strong language emotionally, mm-hmm. I caught it afterwards. Like after I breathed and mm-hmm. was just kind of like, "Who?" I kind of blacked out there for a minute, you know. Um, my bad. Right. I looked. At, I did look at my calls. I was like, "I just said that." And I was like, "Oh, okay. I'm my not bad. sure if I should have. Should I go edit it? I mean, make a point of not right. really editing stuff out like that." Right. Um, but then when I said it flippantly. I f- just kind of felt this like conviction. It wasn't like a, a hard slap conviction. It was kind of more of like a cocked head to the side. Like, mm, really? Really? It's like, did you have to did go? Did you there? have to say it that way? Yeah. It's like you could have said it a different way. Yeah. I felt but that honestly, that's how I feel about cussing. I feel like you, I don't say lazy in, in, in speech, but there's I other ways one, to I really. I have one drill sergeant who would say that. Yeah. I mean, because I feel like you, you have to. 
There's other ways to express, express and explain things. Like yeah. you can expand and articulate things differently. You, yeah. you know, you don't have to always use it in every other word. Now, granted, I'm not saying this like as a person who has never cussed. I I cussed. Not I used to cuss all the time. Like if you go back on like the messages between me and my wife when we were dating, bruh. Oh, should still be in existence by now. Well, she she keeps. I had like a she keeps track them. phone back then. Right? She keeps them. She keeps them. She keeps them. She still has messages. She do because we were like like you know like when you like super duper in love and you just be sending mm-hmm. all those long girl I love you you know you the only one for me you know I was sign a semi I want a thug I, I was a wannabe and so like I was just saying everything in the book so yeah it's there I'm not I'm not like. Admitting to something that was, I don't know, I did, mm-hmm. but I feel like when I, first of all, when I had, when we had our son and I like made the shift to just, you know, cause he's listening. really, yeah, he's listening. And not only that, but like, I need to be, I need to just live right. I need to just do right. I need to just be saved. Let me act like I'm saved <laughs> and see where it takes me. It's amazing what one spiritual maturity will kick in. Right, right. And, and it, kicked, it literally kicked in when I was 23 when, I, when we had our son. I was just like, mm-hmm. you know what? Yeah. That's why I say all the time, like, he, he changed me because, like, when we had him, it was just like, at that moment, like, around that time, because around that time, I lost my mom, too. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I had him, then I lost my mom, and then we got married. And it was just like, all right, I really need to grow up. Mm-hmm. Like, not just as a man, yeah. but I really need to, like, come up mentally. Like, I can't keep yeah. talking to my girlfriend, who is not my wife, this kind of way, and do that in front of the kids. Yeah. And then, now, granted, I'm not saying, like, I'm not saying that it's acceptable. Um, or it's, it's really unacceptable when you're, you know, displaying that type of behavior in front of your kids. Because then you'd be like, what? Because this always happens, like, when there's a... When there's a I'm so racist. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was gonna say well, when it's a little white boy shooting up the neighborhood and stuff like like didn't rally and they're like little Johnny would never do that, but you know little Johnny you know may <laughs> have heard his parents cussing somebody out, cussing him out. It, it's all homegrown, but at the it's same homegrown. time, <laughs> it went a long way around. All right, we're going to around. It Today, starts, it in, starts the in the home. Period. That's that's just me, y'all. But I'm saying like it's there. But at the same time, you can choose to rise above it. You can choose to be better than that. Yeah. And that's that's just the, the, the point that I made. It's like, mm. you know what? I need to be better than, than who I am. Yeah. I need to really live out this thing. And not only that, but at the time, and still even now, like I have a, a pretty decent following. People, you know, look at me, they respect me, and they uh, see me as a preacher, as a man of God. It was like, mm. I, can't, I can't be that type of person in their eye. Mm-hmm. Not not in the sense of that I have to, I'm aiming, I'm trying to be perfect. We all are trying to be perfect in, in Christ. We're trying to mimic Christ's life. We're trying to be perfect as he was perfect, but we are we're consistently falling short of that because we're sin in our body. Yeah. <clears throat> but, you know, we can strive and make intentional moves mm-hmm. so that we are aiming for perfection in that way. And yeah. so one of those intentional moves for me was I'm going to stop cussing. Mm-hmm. I mean, now... <laughs> Somebody will, will, wait, will watch this and be like, oh, well, we know TJ to be a cousin preacher. Now, let me break that down. Like, let me break that this down. So let me break that down. Let me he, break that down. He got the, he got the elder finger. Right, right he got the elder finger. Let me break I'm, that down. I'm going to let him teach. Let me let him teach. <laughs> That's another episode. That's all I'll say. Because you got to go. You got to go to Atlanta, bro. We, mm-hmm. You said 30 minutes. I think we almost like got two hours of content. I think so. <laughs> I really think so. Like, we're gonna talk about that on the episode when we talk about cussing because yeah. I think that, like I said earlier, it goes to the point of when you're fed up and when you're in the mode or in the moment of like, you know what, I'm just completely done with mm-hmm. this and constant attacks, constant things, and you're trying to be trying to uphold the right image, and it just happens. Now, granted, I use the GIF. I didn't use the word. I just used a gif, mm-hmm. but I still shouldn't have used it. But you know, right. I was expressing how so, I, so I was expressing it, how I felt. So then it gets more, even more layered. It, it's it, like, even okay, more layered. I stopped using the word, but now what your hands do? Right. What, exactly. What what, what, what what your actions do? What, what did you really what mean? Did your what substitute was your word right. really mean? Right. right. You know, and nothing will make you. For me, I feel what you're saying because nothing made me check those 
like more subtle or less harmful mm-hmm. things than having kids. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, have you ever heard your two or three year old go around saying, what the heck? And <laughs> yeah. you wonder if yeah, they wait, ever, wait a minute. If they ever, <laughs> gonna, if they ever learn that there's a different word besides heck, heck to yeah. use, yeah. they're going to use they're it use with it. all the oomph that they've just been using. All power and all authority. The, all of it. And, you know, you're just like, <laughs> I don't really think I want that. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't. Like, yeah. I mean, even when um me and my wife, when we got together before we were married, I was new in my faith, and it wasn't uncommon for people to hear me talk about um, or request prayer mm. to, like, stop smoking weed. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, okay, y'all telling me Jesus can change me. I'm, I'm, I'm asking for help. Yeah. You know, but when I met my wife, that was her one, her one thing. Her one thing that she's like, she's like, I came from that. Mm-hmm. I've had bad experiences with that. Mm-hmm. I'll never feel safe or good mm-hmm. being in that environment again. Yeah. I, that's the one thing I can't have. Yeah, and so abracadabra in the name <laughs> of Jesus, it's gone. it was gone. Yeah. Right? It's, yeah. uh, but it's, the, it's kind of funny. It's, yeah. it's actually I don't know if it's sad or funny. It's indicative of something probably deeper. It's either indicative of the Holy Spirit's power and how God used my wife, who mm. was a believer as well at that point. So mm-hmm. it's possible. Um, but also, what could be the case there and sad is that I was more motivated by my wife to mm. put it down mm. than I was by the conviction that it was wrong. Mm. But that's, and that's kind of what my whole thing is with cursing where it's just like, if you feel like it's wrong mm-hmm. or if you feel like this is, could be just harsh or troublesome. And I'm not saying this as a Pharisee, like I'm, I'm processing all this stuff myself too, mm-hmm. you know, and, if you feel like there's some level of conviction, like I said, mm-hmm. even if it's just the you know head turned sideways, really mm-hmm. put it down. Yeah, be willing to put it down. Don't it down. don't wait until it's like oh I got kids now. Not down yeah. because you're the example, but it's like yeah, same no, thing I, I was saying. It. Where it's like it sometimes takes these like more tangible life events mm-hmm. for us to actually do what to God understand. desired. Yeah, for us the whole time. But like what you said, that <laughs> your wife having that love and grace for you, and then you actually. Hearing what she's saying and then doing it, that's, that's, marriage is basically that representation of our relationship with God. Like, right. and that's exactly how God is. Like, he's long suffering. Like, he'll wait till we get it together. Sometimes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he said, like, into the, the book of uh, the Old Testament. The Old Testament, of, right. Uh, wham. Right. Because, like, like, when you look at, how how God is able to still love us, yeah. give us grace, mercy, and accept our flaws until we have those aha moments or those Kairos moments or those whatever mm-hmm. moments. We're like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, mm-hmm. I got to change. He's there waiting for us to change and embracing us with open arms. And then just like that, you know, we're, we're in right standing. It's like everything else is good. Like immediately after you, you know, put down the weed, you and your wife, y'all, what? How many kids y'all had that time? And then y'all had more. None. I mean, you see, y'all had five, and then mm-hmm. it was fruitful and multiplying. You was, the blessings flowed. That pull out game, boy. <laughs> Trash. <laughs> pull out game. I can't well, talk. I, think, I got I four. Think, I'm about to say, <laughs> I, I think, but, you know, Belief over there in California, he got four, too, and he said the same thing. It's on his bio. Shout out to Belief. <laughs> Belief and fatherhood definitely helped me out. And um, was, was it How Married Are You? His, mm-hmm. his podcast with him and his <laughs> wife. But on his bio, he used to crack me up. It said, pull out game. Trash. Trash. I might put that on like, mine. Bruh. I'm definitely going to add that to mine. I should put it on the back of my. You should. Kid. You definitely should. Put it with on the, the back of the van. Put the little stick figures on all the kids. <laughs> just like pull out game trash. Trash. Oh my god, that's hilarious. I should do it. But yeah, I should do it. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right, let's wrap this episode because yeah. you know you got to get you got to hit the road. And your wife's gonna you know never let you back. Just she just got to pull up. You know, she got to bring it back over here. Bring all the kids. Bring them all. You know, they they match somehow. You know. It's about almost even ratio. Right, almost, almost. You one know. for about mm, some of them. You got a, you know, got a few months off for the last one, but you know, a little bit. But, you know, <laughs> but we'll get there. They'll be friends. Yeah, but yeah, no, definitely, you know, man. I appreciate you, man, for real. Yeah, man, appreciate like, it. We're gonna, um, we definitely gonna, we're gonna kick off part two because we got a lot of topics. We got a lot. I feel of like we already had part two. Like if we had two, three hours worth of content, well, I would say part got, what you four. Got, you got Just five. Play. We'll episode. have a different conversation. Put it we'll we'll be wearing different clothes. How about that? That's so. It's like if you watch this episode, 
<laughs> Just know the next time you see us after this, we'll be wearing different we'll wear clothes. different clothes. And we'll have different camera angles and different things like that. We'll be a little bit more professional. Shout out to Jonah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not putting that on him. Uh, we're not gonna put that on him. I have, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely try to invest more into what we're doing so that you know, I, I believe like, you know, when God gives you something like this, you know, you have to invest in it and, and make sure that you're stewarding it well and doing the right things by it. So for sure. I'm definitely gonna do that. Make sure. sure I give the camera some stuff we need. But if not, sure. shout out to Southeastern Camera. That's where I get all my all my gear. <laughs> so all right, bro, man. I appreciate you, man, for real.